Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, this is Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you. Uh, may I ask you some questions? Uh, first timers, raise your hand. Oh. Oh, it's so huge. Thank you. Welcome to the RubyCon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first speakers. No, really. I don't see them. Okay, there you are. Okay, welcome to the RubyCon. Hey, as, as always, I have to start with my, some, some little bit complaint about speaking, uh, giving a present, keynote presentation in English. Uh, <laughs> so, I wish everyone could speak Japanese. <laughs> anyway, but still, I try to be nice. <laughs> so, oh, uh, it's working. Yes. Uh, there's some, some uh, coin phrase like a min, min uh, swan <laughs> that stands for oops <laughs> math is nice and so we are nice uh -oh. and then uh, we have this kind of stickers on some laptops I, I actually I like this phrase because that sounds like a minasan in Japanese which which means everyone so yeah, that term uh, shows our inclusive attitudes of the community. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a nice phrase, though uh, it's kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> so I know me. I'm not really a nice person. <laughs> uh, yeah, inside. <laughs> so... Because the phrase Nina song is so embarrassing for me, so I coined uh, the last year, you know, I coined up the words like a mean ring swan, which stands for Ruby is nice, so we nice. <laughs> yeah, Ruby's okay. It's a, you know, generated artificial thing. So it's, it is nice. At least it's trying to be nice to you. <laughs> Unless you look at the source code. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but this year we don't use we don't need excuse. So be nice. <laughs> yeah, shake hands with your yeah, shake hand with the next person. Yeah, be nice. Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me proud. Very nice. Very nice. Try keeping being nice. That's the community. That's where our community shines. You know, Ruby is no longer a, a new kid on the corner. A new kid on the corner. Oh, what new kids? New kid on the corner. Uh, Ruby has grown older. Uh, it's born in 1993. Uh, according to the, the definition of the birthday of the language. You know, for so I believe for the software, it is quite imp the important, the name is the pretty important for the software because the software is the virtual entity. So the name is the only things we can grab the, the, that kind of virtual abstract thing. So that the day I named my language Ruby is Ah, uh, what? Okay, February 24th, 1990. Ah, uh, well, what? <laughs> okay, February 24th, 1993. I made a mistake. So it returned 25 soon on this day. <laughs> so uh, that means that Ruby has grown older. Yeah. Actually, it's as old as Java. Java project was started in 93. And the Java was released to the public in '95. A Ruby was a Ruby project was started on '93. Then Ruby was, has uh, 
was released to the public in December 21st, 1995. So the Ruby is as old as Java. So the, but uh, recently, new language came in, for example, TypeScript, Swift, Go, Elixir, and a lot more. So the, you know, the people, some people, so try to uh, try new language or even went to, gone to new language. So the people, some people claim that Ruby is dead. No one uses Ruby. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I believe the people here use Ruby, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that the so many people, maybe millions of people, still using Ruby and uh, writing the numerous applications all over the world. So I attended the, some uh, the conferences. The, some conference has uh, even thousand attendees. This is this one is so big, and uh, we have the uh, I don't know six, seven, seven hundred, eight hundred people here, and it, it is fantastic. And the Ruby is still alive. <laughs> So, the, but uh, if I made some kind of big possible change that breaks your software, the people will scream. Ah! <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, the, 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 the tendency, the language designers make mistakes. So, no one perfect. So, the, the, the language designers wants to fix those kind of mistakes in the past. So the lot of language uh, made some kind of the fix and the incompatible changes. Like uh, we did in Ruby 1.9, so we had a huge compatibility gap between 1.8 and 1.9. I don't regret that, but uh, that, kind, that made some kind of the, the community division. That is kind of tragedy. And then Python 2 and Python 3, has compatibility gap, and they had they suffered some kind of the huge uh, division for more than ten years. The community suffered that kind of uh, problem, and then the the people that the PSP uh, de developers may try try to try to create the you know the better PHP language as a uh, PHP six, but. Uh, they made so drastic changes so that the community did not follow. So the project was canceled. So we don't have PHP 6, it was canceled. So we have PHP 7, which is more, more moderate change. Came with the moderate, more moderate change. So ECMAScript 4 has also canceled. So that ECMAScript 4 has the kind of things like uh, the namespace things, class things, a lot of things, but then no one follow, no one in the community follow that, uh, that changes. So the, the project was canceled, so they restarted PHP, uh, ECMAScript 5 from uh, ECMAScript 3, they're adding classes, so, so they took the gradual changes. So, the ECMAScript 6 and 7 gradually uh, getting close to the ECMAScript 4, which was canceled, but uh, it took years to get there. So it's sometimes called the second system syndrome. So that, yeah, we are not, not, we are not perfect, so we made mistakes, so we stack the mistakes, like a, you know, technical debt. So, at some point, we got mad, and we wanted uh, to throw everything away, then start from scratch, which is the second system. But the very few uh, second system uh, runs, runs well, will, will, succeed, will succeed, because you know, the, the, the second system uh, introduced a huge compatibility problem, so the, put the burden on the users. So the Ruby should be stable, because Ruby is matured, uh, Ruby is uh, grown up. 
So if we don't keep compatibility, so the, we, the community suffers a migration cost. Uh, users keep uh, using old version, uh, causing community division, like we did. Or the, in the past, Ruby, the Ruby 1.8.3 introduced a slight uh, the compatibility problem, but it crossed rails. And uh, some part of the community boycotted the version. Yeah, it was shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> you know, I, I put the, my effort to create the Ruby 1.83 at the time, the best Ruby ever <laughs> <laughs> at that point. So that I released it, and then the, at least a part of the community refused that Ruby. Yeah because of the compatibility issue. Or, you know, the Python 3 is, uh, are the same thing. So Py the, the Python com community, Python developers, uh, create the best language they can imagine. But the community refused to use the new, new version of the language. Or, uh, like I said, some project was canceled, like PHP 6 and XMC 4. So, or some people leave the community for the new, for new language. So, open source community is a kind of weird thing. So, the, it's a group of people, but the, we have the no legit membership. You know, we don't have the membership initiation of the Ruby community or anything like that. So, and then it's non-exclusive. You, you use Ruby. But at the same time, you use JavaScript, right? Although I don't. Uh, yeah, if you use Ruby, probably sometimes you might use uh, other languages like Elixir, Go, Swift, or whatever. So it, the, the membership is non-exclusive. So the, we cannot expect a strong loyalty to the, to the community. Yeah, actually, the Ruby community uh, has uh, the member of the Ruby community has the strong loyalty, but uh, we cannot force them to stay. So if some, something happens, or if some other new technology is so attractive, so people will leave. So yeah, we cannot stop them. So we need to attract community. So the, by making uh, the, some kind of the, the breaking change. So we might push our community members away from, the, away from our language. Yeah. So otherwise, community members go away. So if, so that we can, in general, it is quite difficult to make a breaking change to, to keep our, our community active. But uh, to keep our community active, if we keep compatibility, it's boring. <laughs> uh, users will live for more attractive languages or technologies or whatever, like a fourth lamb, cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of a contradiction. We want our community pretty active and growing, and then to to keep them active. So if we keep compatibility, uh, it's boring. People will leave. If we make progress, if we make changes, some of them should be, could be breaking change. And then people will scream, and people will leave. No matter which way we go, people will leave. <laughs> Too bad. So the, the problem is changes. So we like changes. Like, a, yes, we can change them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, we hate changes. So that we have to manage changes. So there are good changes and bad changes. Bad changes, uh, changes that bring frustration, right? 
So the, what kind of changes do you feel frustrated? For example, changes that makes you work. No, you love to work, do you? <laughs> changes that make you work unwillingly. So when you don't want to work, you, when you're forced to work, you upset, right? So, so the changes that surprise you, the bad change, no, you love to surprise, don't you? <laughs> surprise! <laughs> so the changes that make you, ang make you angry, that is bad change. So in short, changes with a benefit is, a, is bad changes, are bad changes. Like a, so benefit, performance, better performance, better productivity, or make you, the changes that make you excited, or make you joy, they are good uh, benefits, the broad form, uh, the changes. Clean language is not benefit. For me, yes, but not for you. So you don't care, we, we, no, you don't care Ruby is clean language or not, yeah, basically, unless you thought the beginner. So, so that, you know, the making language clean or simpler is a kind of the self-satisfaction of, of the designer. So, so we, I have to forget about that kind of self-satisfaction. So avoid bad changes. That is an uh, important uh, design principle that can be applied to your software. So forget about yourself. So may, try to satisfy your users. Try not to make your users scream. So, so how about the good changes? The performance is a good change. So that, you know, no one complains about the faster Ruby, right? So <laughs> Ruby itself is not designed as a fast language because, you know, my primary focus in design of Ruby is, you know, the enjoyable, satisfactory, satisfactory, or some, some kind of like that. So that, yeah, I want to, the programmer's burden, they're pushed away from humans and to the computers. So I want computers work more and humans to work less. So in that sense, so language has to be slow because so the language has to do more things. So the Ruby tends to be slower than say some language, the so Java, C++, or whatever. But uh, that's kind of intentional because I push these buttons to to the to the the virtual machine, to the language, to the computer. But uh, we try to make Ruby faster. So since we released Ruby 2.0 in uh, 2013, so every year the Ruby is getting faster and faster. So in average, uh, we have the we had made made Ruby faster by five to ten percent each year. So Ruby 2 2x to to zero to one to two, and then we are going to have the two five this year. So every Ruby to release improves uh, five to ten percent each year, and uh, that's not enough. That's not enough. So the two years ago in this keynote, so the, I present the, the phrase the, say that is the Ruby three by three. That means the Ruby three will be three times faster than Ruby two all. So the it's two years ago. It was kind of dream, you know. I, I didn't, I didn't really believe it is possible. But we have to, <laughs> we have to motivate, uh, motivate us, the community, to make Ruby faster, so dramatically faster. And so it's it was it has been dream until this year. We had some new technology in MJIT. Uh, MRI, MJIT stands for MRI JIT. So MRI is, means the uh, Maths Ruby interpreter, 
which is not true for Ruby 2 any longer. So we call them, uh, we call, I call MRI as theory from now on. So the, it, it is uh, kind of JIT compiler for theory. So the adding JIT compiler makes Ruby faster, but uh, so the Ruby has a lot of constraints because of the, its history, because of the, the past uses, because of the compatibility. The, these are constraints. The so memory usage and dependency and the portability. So memory usage means that the C Ruby with JIT should run on smaller server to dino, which has a 500k, uh, 500 meg, I mean. It is quite small in the today's, uh, today's standard, but uh, it should run on this stuff. So that, you know, you cannot consume as much memory as possible to make it faster, but uh, at the, the best minimum, so the CRB must run on smaller server to dino. Uh, mostly because I was hired by Heroku. <laughs> <laughs> So JIT can be turned off, so that so the C Ruby without JIT consumes as much memory as Ruby C Ruby too. And the dependency, so C Ruby should not depend on the huge third-party library uh, that we cannot maintain by ourselves. So we cannot control them third-party libraries. They may have bugs. They may not uh, put our issues in priority. So the project may be abandoned. So we may need to fork it and maintain something else by ourselves. But the, the most JIT libraries are so complex and so difficult to maintain. So, so we avoid using third-party JIT libraries. So there are some kinds of the JIT libraries out there. So for example, LLVM JIT or GNU Lightning or LibJIT. So the, those had uh, some issues for the sake of the, the maintainability or controllable or licensing issue. So the latter two has, with, comes with the LGPL, which is okay, but not ideal. So portability. Uh, Ruby runs on many, many, many platforms and CPUs. So the, and this should run as many platforms as it does now. So it should run in Linux, OS X, or Mac OS, or Windows, or sometimes uh, other OS operating systems, even older ones, like the AIX and the Sun OS, or SolarWinds, and then on many CPUs, and uh, Intel, uh, ARM, uh, NIPS, or whatever. So, the, regarding those constraints, so it's nearly impossible until this year. The, it's done by our hero, the Blood Snail and Makarov from Red Hat. So who is the author of the Open Red Hat table, which we improved uh, a lot in last year. So he was the father, he is the father of MJ. So you can uh, check out the, the current status of MJ here. The, BN Markov, Ruby, 3, RPL, MJ branch. So the important things is it is RTL, uh, it is GCC clone, and it, it is messages. Uh, let me explain those things. So RTL stands for the Register Transfer Language. So it's a register-based uh, internal representation. So the stack IR and the register IR is a hot topic in the implementation of the virtual machine. So the current implementation of the, the Ruby virtual machine, YAV, uses the stack, stack IR, like this. Uh, get local from uh, local variable B, they push into the stack. The get local from the local variable C index, then push into the stack. Then up there, the plus, it took the two, two oper operand, operands from a stack, then push the result, then the push the result into the, the local variable A index. That is the, uh, the stack-based IR used by Yelp. 
uh, the the RTL use the re register based IL. So the plus the local variable D and C, then push the result into A in one instruction. So you have used the stack based IL, and the stack based IL is the simpler and shorter, and the register based IL that creates less instruction. Register based IL creates less memory traffic. And uh, it's a kind of controversial, but the uh, register based IL runs faster. Yeah, the people in the stack stack based camp will be uh, you know complain about that. But anyway. <laughs> uh, then the Brad replaced the Yelp by his RTL VM. This is quite a task. And he did it in a year. That's quite amazing. And then, which is as fast as 2.4, the current uh, release of the Ruby, uh, Ruby 3.2. Mm -hmm. And then, which consumes as much memory as 2.4. That is pretty important thing. That means if we turn off the shit, the, the C Ruby with, uh, with RTL, which is the baseline of the, the JIT compiler, that runs as fast as Ruby 2.4, the current implementation, and the Ruby consumes as much memory as Ruby 2.4. So that, you know, uh, since the Ruby 2.4 runs on the smallest dyno, so the, uh, the RTL, v, uh, the C Ruby with RTL VM runs on the smallest dyno if we turn off the, the, the JIT compiler. Please. Then here we implement the JIT. So that to, uh, compile those RTL to uh, the, the native code. So RTL VM, oops, yeah. RTL can be JIT compiled into C file. Then the, those C files are compiled to machine code in, inside of the dot .s or shell of the file. Then uh, you, uh, the compiled with the command line GCC and so on, or clone. Then dynamically loaded. So which is kind of you know, complex task, but it it makes the implementation of JIT pretty much simpler and maintainable. So the current implementation user generates the output code in the mem in the memory, then execute the output in memory. That's simple. But uh, the baseline RTL RTL VM generates RTL, RTL instead of the YAL bytecode. So then execute the RTL as an interpreted way. Then MJ generates RTL, which is the same as the, the previous steps. Then generates C from RTL. It compiles C, that C file by uh, GCC or clone. Then dot load compile.so files. Then execute. So the, you know, it's pretty complex, but the, he uploaded most of the compilation work into the, the worker thread. So it, it runs pretty, uh, it runs quite fast. So actually the MJIT is far, uh, far from compl uh, completion. So that it, it doesn't run Rails yet, but <laughs> it, it runs most of the Ruby tests and Ruby stacks, but it does not run Rails yet. You know, so our benchmarks are pretty complete. Still use much benchmarks, not real world ones. But uh, MJIT runs six times faster than uh, we in average in micro benchmarks. So then MJIT consumes four more four times more memory than we But my, in micro benchmarks, it tends to be uh, exaggerated. The result of tends to be exaggerated. So the optic error, which is a little bit more uh, realistic task, which is, optic error is the kind of uh, NES, Nintendo Entertainment System Emulator. So that it has the, the, some kind of benchmark mode, so it runs as fast update, the screen update as possible without the, you know, screen drawing. So in those kind of benchmark mode, MG runs 2.8 times faster than movie to old. 2.8 times faster than the visual. Not bad. Not bad. 
So the optical is the CPU intensive uh, the software. So that it, it is uh, pretty easy to make uh, the faster by adding Z. Anyway, so 2.8 times faster. And the important thing is MZ consumes 1.16 times more memory. So 20% more. So 2.8 times faster with 2.2 mem times memory. It's quite a number. It's quite promising. So not bad. So we have clear benefit. So the, we are going to add that kind of improvement, which is technically attractive to the community and developers. So the, in addition, we are going to add a better tool set. So fa for example, faster tracing. So like a, by faster tracing, we are going to have a better debugger or better profiler. Or, or we can have the better coverage. Or we are trying to make uh, Ruby errors uh, under more understandable. For example, the, we recently added the Dijumin gem. So we, uh, in 2.4, so like uh, we made some kind of, you know, typo in our software. The error, error message includes uh, the right Dijumin this, what's up that? Things so that you can easily fix that kind of simple type of error. So, so the, these kind of uh, things, the two set chains and the performance things is uh, keeping compatibility is quite nice. And uh, me addition is also nice and good changes. Uh, me addition really breaks compatibility. So the adding classes, adding methods. So we are keeping doing do, that kind of things. So we will add convenient methods and convenient classes to the language and standard libraries. So the, for example, in Ruby 2.5, we are going to add uh, this method, sync grapheme clusters, which is, uh, you know, in the past, the strings are sequence of bytes. It's quite simple. We only have the 125, 28 characters, including the, the controlling uh, characters, at most 280. Uh, 128, but uh, the the country or culture like us has a thousand characters, so the, the single byte is too small for a character. So that we introduced the something in the code point, which is the which can we can uh, represent the thousands of characters in multi byte sequences, sometimes at the variable lengths, so that. ASCII A has the length of the bar, uh, length of a byte, or maybe the uh, Japanese, say, Japanese characters has three byte lengths or something like that. Uh, but uh, it's not enough. So the, the people, after Unicode, people open the box of Pandora, <laughs> named emoji. So, yeah, and uh, you know family emoji. So the the parents and children. But uh, do you know that you can combine these things? So that it used to be the this character. This is one code point things. But uh, we recently added the uh, you know the same sex marriage. The ladies and ladies can get uh, together, or maybe the guys, uh, guys, guys together, or maybe skin colors, yellow, white, black, whatever. Maybe, maybe we are going to have some blue skins. <laughs> so that you know, if you add the the ma the fee a male character, then combine the the blue skin. Okay, yellow skin, I mean. So you can have the yellow skin male emoji. So you can combine them. This is one character, but consists of the two, uh, two code points. The, the combination of the two code points, code points 
is called in graphene in Unicode. So the, we recently uh, support the uh, Unicode 10 in, in Ruby 2.5, so that we have to handle those kind of the, the combined code points in the graphene. So that if you want to split up the, uh, the strings according to the graphene, you have to use the, the graphene, I mean the graphene clusters. So, and then we also added the strings, each graphene character, uh, each graphene clusters, so that you can have the, you know, the each graphene clusters the whole at the time. So that's quite complex though. <laughs> so, uh, there's no clear difference between good, uh, good and bad in some cases. So we have some kind of controversial changes in the future. So the, the, I'm going to introduce some kind of the controversial changes. We are somewhat wondering to in, uh, integrate into the future Ruby or not. So for example, frozen string literals by default. So some phrases, oh, thank you. Some not. Uh, the, we have benefit, it's faster. And uh, we don't have to generate uh, the string object for each uh, the string literal reference. So it's faster and it consumes less memory. That's a good point. And also, uh, less the making string frozen, you can find some kind of errors very early. But uh, we have uh, disadvantages. Like uh, it's, it's called incompatible code. So it would break some code or many codes. So, yeah, for example, in Ruby 2, uh, I don't remember, uh, Ruby 2.2, we introduced some kind of magic comment, which is the string, uh, frozen string literal, true. So that makes uh, the string literals frozen if you specify it. And then uh, that, that broke your software. <laughs> that break your software. That, that broke so many softwares. <laughs> so that, I'm not sure how much of you freeze or not after seeing that kind of errors. <laughs> uh, so that, that's one thing that we are wondering. So it's, yeah, many things sounds nice, but uh, it's just uh, some kind of you know, frustration. So real keyword arguments. So the, right now, the Ruby keyword arguments are somewhat fake. Because you know you can specify the keyword argument like this, but in reality, in semantics, it says this is a kind like this. So the hash table at the end of the, the argument list, which is the, the real semantics of the keyword argument, is calling site. Uh, it it makes language simpler. But uh, implementation or semantics of the keyword arguments very complex. So the making a real keyword argument to the Ruby, uh, it makes Ruby simpler, faster, and consumer less memory. That's the thing. But uh, it will be incompatible. It will break this off, especially C function. Well, we are considering about adding pattern matching to the language as function language has. And then, yeah, the, the problem is we are lacking uh, the characters and the syntax, so we, we have no idea what kind of language we're going to add. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or well, tail call optimization, which some language has, so that, so, so it will be, it will make some, some will be program faster, and there are no recursion limits in it. And then the, we have this advantage for the tail cop tail optimization, which is confusing backtrace because you know, it's uh, the tail call removes the, the call site, so so that the backtrace will be reduced from the actual call call uh, call stacks. Uh, or we are uh, trying to investigate in the alternative concurrency model. So the Koichi, who is in charge of the Yelp, uh, the, the working on designing the something in Guild, 
So the, the benefit is clear. So the, by adding that kind of the new, better concurrency model, we can be multi-core aware. So you can utilize the multi-cores that the recent computer has. But uh, we have this advantage as well. So the adding, we are not going to, to remove threads. So the, so adding new concurrency model along with threads has the new uh, two concurrency model in the language, and it makes the language more complex, or more less understandable. So the, we are researching on the static type analysis. So the, by adding that kind of static type analysis, find more errors in compile time, which is good, but uh, it makes language more complex and less flexible. So the, yeah, for the up-to-date uh, research, so we have tomorrow, the, the before, tomorrow before lunch, Python Ruby programming language session in room argumentary. So where are we room? By Pasotoro Matsumoto. Uh, we share our family name, but we are not with our kids. <laughs> yeah, Matsumoto is pretty kind of family name. So there's no clear decision in those, uh, those changes. So we might add them, add them, we might not. Not clear. So that we have tons of trade off. So good things and bad things at the same time. So we might take the, take the changes for the sake of the good things, or we might abandon the changes for the sake of the, the, bad, the, the disadvantages. So the design of Ruby language, I am fully responsible. I'm a lead designer. Every language change requires my approval still. After 25 years, I'm responsible. So blame me. <laughs> but at the same time, I am not an expert of everything. So I don't know. I don't. I know little about the concurrency, for example. I know little. I know little about web applications. Yeah, as PHH. Not me. <laughs> so that that means we need to hear from you. Because Ruby is a tool for you to write software. So you are an expert of your domain, not me. So don't ask me for the guidance of your domain. So, but uh, I'd like to ask you about your domain. So I want to. Uh, no more one HP. No more void plotting. <laughs> so the strategy is here: minimize the impact, maximize the benefit, and form agreement. So the minimize impact is the emphasize compatibility. That strategy is how that works most time, most of the time. So that I try to minimize the impact of the the upgrading. So. So we try to uh, we, we try to allow you to safely upgrade to newer version for, to from say two two to two three or two three to two four or even two two five. So yeah, it's a responsibility of mature technology, but at the same time it's forward. So we have to uh, sometimes make uh, in breaking change. So. At the, for those kinds of the breaking change, we have to maximize the benefit. And the clear language or uh, simpler syntax or something is not among those benefits. So the, for example, Ruby 1.9 introduced uh, some breaking changes, but at the same time, Ruby 1.9 runs three to five times faster in average than Ruby 1.8 due to the uh, because of the re the virtual new virtual machine. So the the Ruby 1.9 has a clear benefit of the performance. So the people gradually it took time, unfortunately it took five years, but uh, the, the gradually community accept that can change. 
with a clear benefit. Or the third strategy is form agreement. Yeah, for like a Ruby on Rails. Yeah, they make breaking change all the time. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as, as I've heard, so the web technology is changing so quickly. So if they took the conservative strategies, they left behind from the up-to-date technology. So they try to make the breaking changes and the update up-to-date technology. So, yeah, if the community agrees with it, that's okay. But uh, programming language is pretty mature, the, the domain of the computer science. So that I don't think we can form that kind of agreement for the language. Yeah, but uh, we try. <laughs> There's no the clear winning strategy, so we pick the best strategy for each changes. So we need more input from you. Ah, that time, place, and location. So time means the, our release schedules. So as you might know, so we release the new uh, Ruby version each year on Christmas Day. as a Christmas gift from the community. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that means that from January to August, we discuss about the, the new, new features, new technologies, uh, new implementations. Then September to October, so we release, release candidates. Then the, in November, we freeze the feature. So no, no new features after November. So that we just fix that. So, so that we have those kinds of time frames for the new version. The new version. And there are places, so we, on the internet. So we have the site, bugsrubyland.org which is our issue tracker runs on Redmine, so that we can discuss about the new features, bugs, and the proposals, and everything. So that if you have any ideas, proposals, uh, feel free to submit the issue, uh, issues on this site so, so that we can discuss about that. And then, yeah, I'm sorry that I have to refuse most of them, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, mostly because of the, you know, the consistency or, you know, constraint or some uh, just redundant ideas. So, but, uh, yeah, you have to stand that. But uh, besides that, we have, the, we have had a lot of uh, value input from the, the, those kind of proposals. So that last, say, last five years, the most of the Ruby, uh, Improvement progress uh, had came from had come from the the proposal from the community. So I'm pretty glad that. So that so I I'm, I'm still am a uh, lead designer of the language, but uh, the ideas of new ch new changes, new features, a uh, new improvement, uh, or most of them came from the community. That I'm proud of that. So the occasions, so the, by looking at the, our wiki, so we, we have the Ruby developer meet, meeting each month, face-to-face, uh, -face. so in Tokyo. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, but uh, we are talking about the, the you know, the richness, uh, the, the, what we discuss and what we are going to discuss in English. So that you can see what we discuss and that you can propose what to discuss in the, in the, in the meeting. So that it, sometimes we forget about the, the discussing your issues. So that ping us by writing these this weak pages. So that, okay, you. I submit this, this nifty proposal, but you don't touch them for a month or two. So that, what do you think about that? So that kind of thing, things can be done in our issue trackers or, or in the, in, on the week pages. So that you can even persuade me to writing down to the, to the wiki page. So that it's a community effort. So 
the, the term language designer no longer means I design everything. So instead, the community design most of the language, then I make decisions. So the, the definition of the designer has been changed for those years. In summary of this talk, so there are good changes about changes in design. So every design, Ruby design, of course, your, your application design, your framework design, your library design, every design, that's good change about changes. You have to uh, manage your changes so that we try to maximize the good changes uh, and the minimizing bad changes. We need to more input from community. Just because so the Ruby is for you. It's originally for me. So I I want just wanted to create all my program, my own programming language. So I Ruby was originally designed for me myself. So I'm just pretty selfish. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for those years, so many people use Ruby, love Ruby, you know the right software in Ruby, so that Ruby became your language. That means, so we need more input from the community and from you to reduce my mistakes. So, by the way, <laughs> that, this is the end of my talk. And then, uh, in addition, we are going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce the, the new Ruby 2.5. So that, uh, Ruby 2.5 has, uh, this, the Ruby 2.5 relatively uh, minor release, so that we had added uh, some kind of the top level constant lookup user. They, like, uh, in, in the past, string, clone, clone strings, you know, no meaningless reference works, uh, works as a uh, top level string, but uh, we have been removed. Then the backtrace, uh, if you make errors, so that you see the backtrace in software, so that the backtrace order is reversed. And uh, you, you can put the rescue else and shoe inside the build block. And then uh, we added the yield self method. Yeah, some desperate need that, <laughs> I don't know. And then we, uh, we supported the Unicode, to, uh, Unicode 10. And then we have uh, improved the performance. The mutex has revision and faster block passing. And then the tracing instruction is refactored from scratch. Uh, one more thing. We are going to celebrate with 25th birthday on the February 24th, 2018. So that we are going to have some kind of the celebration party in Tokyo in, on that day. But uh, it's, you know, not many of you can attend that, that party <laughs> in Tokyo. And then it is, yeah, the attendees is one of the people maximum, so that it's too small. <laughs> so, so we are going to have some kind of the virtual event. So that, yeah, tweet your memory, your ins inspiration, or whatever about Ruby, to celebrate with the 25th birthday of Ruby and tweet with uh, this hashtag, Ruby 5. So we can, uh, I think after the birthday, so we can gather these tweets and put it into the, uh, the one site to celebrate the Ruby 25th birthday. And uh, yeah, the, to recall what you feel for that day, for that day, that, that year, the, that, that we can, I can know the, how Ruby changed your life. So that's all, folks. <laughs> Thank you.